Chapter 24, The Roaring Twenties. Chapter 24, The Roaring Twenties. Chapter 24 is going to be one lesson. So we're going to learn about the Roaring Twenties really quickly. And the first part of the Roaring Twenties we will talk about is returning to peace and prosperity. We just spent a year, the United States just spent a year at war, in World War I, and now all the men are coming home. And what are they returning to? Well, they're returning to a new president, Warren G. Harding. He won in a landslide victory with 60% of the popular vote in 1920 presidential election. He will select a man named Calvin Coolidge, who was the governor of Massachusetts, as his running mate. Warren G. Harding's presidency, however, was not always great, and it had a few problems. The first one involved... Um, the Teapot Dome scandal, which um, it involved the first cabinet member ever to be convicted of a crime for his actions while in office. The Secretary of the Interior, Albert Fall, accepted large sums of money and valuable gifts from private oil companies in exchange for control over government oil reserves out west. And so Albert Fall will eventually be convicted of that crime um, while a member of the cabinet. Harding also did um, appoint many of his trusted friends to high positions in the government, and uh, some of these men, like Albert Fall, used their positions to gain wealth through sometimes illegal means. Now, with that being said, Harding did get the economy uh, rolling. It um, The economy was really strengthened during his short time as president. In August of 1923, Warren G. Hardy suffered a massive heart attack and died near the end of his first term of office. And so his vice president, Calvin Coolidge, would become the new president. He was a pro-business guy just like Harding was, and the economy boomed during his presidency. In 1928, the United States and 14 other countries will sign something called the Kellogg-Briand Pact, which was an agreement that outlawed war. Now... I don't know what would happen if uh, war did break out, what would happen to these people, but it's kind of a ceremonial thing. When Calvin Coolidge uh, finished up Harding's term, and then he was elected to his own term, uh, he chose not to run for re-election. And so Herbert Hoover will be elected president in 1928, and he promised to maintain the prosperity that has happened in the 1920s under Harding and Coolidge. Life during the 1920s was ever-changing. It was a changing society. After the war, many young people who are coming back to war moved to the big cities. Now, part of the thinking here is that these men survived fighting over in Europe that um, they're going to live life to the fullest now. They just went to war, they managed to survive, and now they're not going to hold back. They're going to have as much fun and live their life to the fullest. So, so a lot of young people moved to the big cities. Um, also, there was more access to education, especially for women. And women, of course, found new opportunities. Now, many of the women who were working in factories ended up going back to their homes. But some women did find some other opportunities to um, do some work. Women who started to get college degrees worked as nurses, teachers, librarians, social workers. Uh, they also got involved in politics. Um, the first women to serve as governors happened in the state of Wyoming and in the state of Texas. And by the middle of the tw uh, 1920s, 145 women were serving in state legislatures, and five women had won um, seats in the House of Representatives. Some young women uh, found other ways to express their new freedoms. Uh, young women, known as flappers, Open, openly challenged traditional ideas of how women were supposed to behave. So these flappers would cut their hair really short and wore makeup and short dresses and they uh, smoked. Yeah, they were a rebellious group of young women at that time and they were bound to have a, a fantastic time going to dances and all sorts of uh, things. 
Now, this was kind of out of the ordinary for women during, the, during this time period, or prior to this time period. We were also in a time period of fear and violence. There was negative attitudes toward communists. Now, remember, communists started to come up during the war, when communists overthrew the Russian government and pulled Russia out of the war. So people started to fear communists, and that led to a red scare, a fear of communists. Uh, some examples of this fear of communism in the United States. We'll start with some anarchists. These are people who are against government. They are Italian anarchists, and their names were Sacco and Vanzetti. And uh, they were convicted of a crime. Sacco and Vanzetti were convicted of um, killing a factory paymaster and his guard. Now, many people tried to get them off the hook and get their conviction overturned, <coughs> But it never happened, and both of them were executed for robbery and murder. Now, some people believe that their um, conviction was based on the fact that they were foreigners, not really because they were in, you know, guilty of any crime. <clears throat> and I think later on, evidence revealed that they didn't really commit the crime. Anyway, concerns over immigration led to new laws, like the Emergency Quota Act of 1921, which limited the number of immigrants allowed in the country, and the National Origins Act of 1924, which banned immigration from East Asia and reduced the number from other countries. So this was all an attempt to limit the number of immigrants coming into our country with the hopes of containing communism. Here's a picture of Sacco and Vanzetti. Here's Sacco. Here's Vanzetti. And here's a newspaper article that shows that Sacco and Vanzetti were executed right here. This is the article. There was a movement uh, in the teens of the 20th century, uh, not the teens, but the year teens, um, to curb alcohol. It was started by a women's group who felt that men were getting off work, spending their money on alcohol, and then coming home and either being verbally abusive or physically abusive or, for that matter, just ignoring them, coming home and passing out on the couch. So women really got the uh, movement started to pass something called the 18th Amendment, which outlawed the manufacturing, the, sailing, the selling, and the transporting of alcoholic beverages. This became known as prohibition. So you can see in this picture here, guys dumping out all their alcohol. And about 12 to 13 years later, um, the 21st Amendment will be passed, um, which ended Prohibition, so you can see in this one, good old days are back again, woohoo, alcohol. Religious leaders were uh, concerned about the youth of our country, and this led to a movement called fundamentalism, the belief in the literal word-for-word -word interpretation of the Bible. And one of the things they were against was the teaching of something called evolution, Evolution is the idea that humans kind of evolved from early, like, primate-type people. And, um, you know, instead of God creating humans, evolution would be the opposite of that, more of a scientific view of the uh, formation of human beings. As you can kind of tell on my wonderful picture here of Homer Simpson and how he evolved the Homer sapien. From Monkeus Idolatus to Chimpus Imbecilus to Apis Stupidus to Neanderslav to the Homer Sapien. Oh. Anyway, there was a man who, in Tennessee, who was put on trial for teaching the idea of evolution. This was in 1925. And he goes on trial. And this became a very famous uh, case called the Scopes Trial. And Scopes, John Scopes was convicted of teaching evolution and fined $100 for breaking the law. Which, you know, doesn't seem like a lot of money, but he lost. Anyway, later on down the line, the state Supreme Court of Tennessee will later overturn Scopes' conviction. We will see more uh, rights given to minorities in our country in the 1920s after World War I, and first thing we'll see is the Great Migration. This saw large numbers of African Americans leaving the South and moving to the North to take factory jobs. But what you will also see in the 1920s is the rise of the Ku Klux Klan again. 
Now we saw them come back, or saw them rise during Reconstruction times, if you remember, and then they kind of lost power, and now they're back again in the 1920s, gaining more power. Marcus Garvey, who you see in this picture, was an African-American who encouraged black people to express pride in their culture and establish economic independence, which led to this new black nationalism movement. Now, if we look at this map, this kind of shows you um, African-American movements in the 1920s, moving up to the north. So if you follow the yellow, oops, <clears throat> follow the yellow, they're moving up north. The purple, they're moving to the northern Midwest. And the light blue, they're moving from the south to the Midwest, north, and even to California. Hispanic Americans organized to fight prejudice and promote civil rights by forming the League of United Latin American Citizens in 1929. That period should not be there. And in 1924, Congress passed the Indian Citizenship Act, which granted citizenship to all Native Americans. So finally, Native Americans have become citizens of the United States. But that was in 1924. Let's talk some culture here in the 1920s. You have national radio networks, because the radio was just uh, invented. National radio networks like NBC and CBS were formed. Yes, those are the same stations that we see on television today and still on the radio. Um, in 1927, the jazz singer was the first talkie or motion picture with sound. And baseball became really popular in the 1920s, even though it had been around for a few years. Baseball really became popular in the 1920s when you had stars like Babe Ruth playing in baseball games. Popular music of the time was jazz. The jazz age was an explosion in the popularity of jazz music. Artists like Louis Armstrong, who you see in the picture, and Duke Ellington made major contributions to music. Also a popular form in the 1920s was blues music. When it comes to famous writers and artists... You see an emergence of African-American writers during this time period. It became known as the Harlem Renaissance. And writers from this period made lasting contributions to American culture. A couple of examples of this would be Claude McKay and Zora Neale Hurston, who wrote about African-American life and spoke out on racial pre uh, discrimination. And you have a famous author named Langston Hughes, who you see in the picture, who wrote poems, plays, and novels about African-American life. Writers who criticized American society in the 1920s became known as the Lost Generation. A couple of famous authors in this period is F. Scott Fitzgerald, who you see in the picture there, who wrote about the loss of morality in, of, in the 1920s in his novel called The Great Gatsby. Maybe you saw a more recent picture movie of The Great Gatsby it was like with Leonardo DiCaprio in it. Ernest Hemingway and Sinclair Lewis were also other famous writers of this era. George O'Keefe was known for detailed paintings of flowers in the Southwest, as you see. And this is one of her um, paintings right here. This is George O'Keefe. And architects embraced a new style of art called Art Deco, which had clean, sharp lines resembling machines. So here's an example there. Um, this <laughs> Empire State Building would also be an example of Art Deco. That is the end of Chapter 24.